Okay, hey everybody, I'm Skylar Town. I'm a professional lock picker. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to explain how lock picking works, but I am going to explain in 30 seconds how locks work and then tell you about a few different things that you can do with your locks. Um, but we'll tell you that in a minute. Inside the lock, you'll find your spring, your driver pin, and your key pin. The key pin corresponds to the heights of the bidding of your key, which is what we call the cuts in your key. With the key inserted into the lock, as I said, the key pins match the cuts in the key. With the key pins flush at that red line, which is what we call the shear line, that's the line between the plug of the lock and the Bible of the lock, when it's right there, you can turn the key freely. That's how your lock works. Now, the easiest way that you can modify your locks to make a beautiful conversation piece out of them is actually just remove some of the material from the lock. And there are actually some locks being passed around right now that I've been assembling over in my chair while all the rest of you have been knitting. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can see how they work. Uh, admittedly, I now have a mini mill in my bedroom. Um, you don't need this to do the work that I've been doing. This is great for me because I do a lot of trainings, corporate lectures. I'm doing a training for Hasbro on February 4th, actually, which should be a lot of fun. Ah, thank you, thank you. Um, so I get really lovely results from it. Uh, you don't need the same. You can get started in the same way that I got started with a hacksaw blade, a dremel, a uh, drill. This is the first cutaway I ever did. <coughs> Metal tape, really handy. Uh, this is no longer functional at the time, though it worked very briefly, uh, and I was really proud of it. So you can get started <laughs> really easily. You can also, uh, oh yeah, this. You can make very attractive things today. Go on to eBay, buy a safe, a dial combination safe for like $20, $25. This is a very simple window cut that you can do with a Dremel tool tomorrow. It explains itself. And then you can see how the lock works. So you can also improve the security of your own locks in your home. This is a check pin on a nice commercial cylinder called a Schlage Everest. Uh, this was the first lock that I ever looked at. I thought, oh man, I wonder if I could do that to some other lock I have laying around. So I took a Dremel tool and drilled into the side of the plug of one of my locks. I then uh, decided that I would install a check pin into that area. What that means is that I now have a pin that goes in the side of the lock, and when the normal pins try to descend into it, it gets pushed out. <sighs> what that means is that when you put a key into the lock, that key will push all of the normal pins up, and it will also move the check pin enough that you can turn the cylinder. But if you're trying to pick the lock, you're just going to attack all of the normal pins that the key operates, and you're going to skip over the check pin. This is just the check pin in its full housing. And this actually functioned with the key, and it made it a little harder to pick, and it was a, a needlessly complex project that didn't really offer much extra security, but it was so much fun. <laughs> Now this is something that you can do a lot easier. Take a pin out of one of your locks and chuck it into a drill, just a normal hand drill. I was actually doing this the other night because I got snowed away from all of my other photos. Um, I was staying with a photographer though, so these are a lot better. Um, so, then, so then just spin it like you would a lathe and lay into that pin with some files. Now what you get is actually very attractive to begin with. It's, it's really lovely looking, but it also improves the security of your lock. Uh, and you can go through and make all sorts of different types. Uh, those are your driver pins on top and your key pins on the bottom. And when you're trying to pick the lock, all of those little notches cut out of them and serrations and all that make it really difficult to understand what the heck is going on and difficult to actually get the lock picked. So do that. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, this, though, you can also change the actual behavior of your lock. Um, the little bit filed away on the second chamber and the fourth chamber there, uh, corresponding file away that same material on the keys, uh, <laughs> uh, the second position on the top one, the fourth position on the bottom one, and what that does for you, oh, microphone. Uh, so now you have one key that can turn in one direction, but not the other. Oh, oh, whoa, I had another photo, oh, great. Okay, I can relax. I thought that was, sorry. Uh, so as you can see, the pin now can rest flush to the part that you filed away, but not to the other part, which makes one key operate it in one direction, the other key in the other direction, and neither in the opposite. Um, why that's worth doing, I don't know. Key pins, <laughs> or keys, just keys. Uh, you can do all sorts of fun things with keys, but this is my second to last slide, and this is the best key project of all. If it's not immediately obvious what this is for, <laughs> good. Uh, and, and you, sir, I'll make you one. Uh, <laughs> 
I am Skylar Town. If you want to see more of what I'm doing and more lectures in the Boston area, SkylarTown.com. On the 22nd, I'll be at Sprout. Uh, Open Locksport is my company, and I'm easiest to find is at Shoebox on Twitter. Thank you.